If you're watching this video because you are a diamond painter and my channel is primarily diamond painting, don't click away. I promise you might become obsessed and I might start a new addiction for you because I know how addicting diamond painting is and I started getting addicted to these Mill Hill kits. They're called Mill Hill Button and Beads Cross Stitch Kits and I am just literally obsessed. So here's one that I just finished. Uh, I forget what this is called. I'll put it on the screen. But look at the detail. The detail of the beads. Oh my goodness. And they're really fun and they're really quick to complete. I promise. Here's a little ornament that I did. Oh my goodness. So adorable. So if you're like me and you, maybe you diamond paint and you cross stitch, I wanted to do a really quick video introducing these Mill Hill button and beads kit. So we'll get into this one. This one's called Haunted Hotel. And it actually has glow-in-the-dark thread, which is amazing. You can get these from 123 Stitch, or if you're in Canada, Stitch It Central also has a bunch. I just ordered a bunch from there. But basically, in your kit, I'll pull out what you get. You get... This is your perforated plastic canvas, so this is what you'll be cross-stitching on. You usually get a little button like some sort of themed button, which is the ghost. You will get packs of beads. So this one has three different packs of beads. And then here are, here's your floss. And then here is, I'm not gonna show the pattern because we don't want to do copyright things. Um, but here's a list of all the floss that's included. And then on the back, there's some very, really, really simple instructions, really easy to follow. And basically you do all the stitching first, you do the back stitching and like the outline stuff, and then you attach the beads and then you attach the button. And then you have the option of finishing it with a six inch by six inch Mill Hill frame. The most annoying thing the most annoying thing, like I've done three Mill Hill kits so far. The most annoying thing is yes, you get your floss. They're not numbered. They're not separated. You actually have to go through this list and figure out which color belongs to which. This is the most annoying, freaking annoying part. I wish they would just separate them or like put numbers, like identify them, but um, it doesn't take as long as you think it does. What I like to do is I like to add a column and I like to number like just going one, two, three. So it looks like this kit actually has different, 18 different thread colors or floss colors. Um, and then I'll go through here and separate them out. And if you have trouble figuring out what color is what color, like for example, dark brown versus light brown, all I do is I Google, this is the DMC number, I just Google the DMC number, go to Google Images, and look at the, and there's usually examples of the floss color, and then kind of go off Google and try and figure them out. Um, and then I once I have identified the color, I actually use this little stitching, I don't know what this is called, whatever and then I attach the floss to the num to the little hole according to the number. What I like to do is I like to figure out like okay 310 is black so black is going to be obvious. I'll put uh I'll figure out the the color which is number two so then I'll attach black here and then I just go through and it's just a matter of like doing the super obvious ones and then doing the more difficult ones that are remaining. And then all you have to do is follow the instructions. All it says is basically to start in the center of your canvas. Then when you're ready to stitch, all I do is I find the center of the canvas and there's actually, there's actually instructions. Like this is how you find the center and then you find the center on the pattern and then you start at the center. And I ended up like for this kit, what I ended up doing was I taped washi tape along the sides like I wrapped it around the sides so that, that while I was stitching the the floss wouldn't get stuck in these little grooves and it, it really helped but but it like don't use super high quality washi because it ended up ripping like this canvas is black but underneath like there's like a layer and underneath here is white so I ended up having like you can tell here sort of 
I ended up having to color it in with marker because once I ripped up the washi, it, it was it showed the white underneath. So I actually ended up having to color it in black. And um, you can see I didn't do a very good job of centering this one. Like I'm kind of sad about it, but that's okay. I'm sure that once like the frame comes, I'll figure out a way to center it within the frame. But again, like oh my god this is the back and like okay so you're doing your cross stitch and you can see that the colors kind of hop from like if you're over here and you're finished this lightning bolt and this lightning bolt is the same color don't be afraid to like hop your your floss through the back and like hop over here instead of tying off or ending your stitches um for the most part I tried not to tie knots or anything like that I kind of just buried my the the lead of the stitch or lead of the floss underneath already done cross stitches um but there are some some knots and I don't really care because like okay it's the back no one's gonna see the back no one's gonna be like can I see the back of your cross stitch so don't worry about that but if you do if you were like I don't want to do washi just in case like I don't want uh, the color to peel up. Uh, Stitcherista, who's another diamond painting her, painter who's also a cross stitch person, recommended grabbing these frames. I'll put the link in the description box below for these. And they're just like these wooden pieces that puzzle together. And then just buying thumbtacks and, and tacking them on. So this will be good basically when you're working in like the center of your image but once you get closer to the edges you will have to take it off this thing um so I think it it's really dependent on how you work and how like what works for you but I've been finding that the washi tape uh really is helpful and like I I haven't I haven't touched this in like over a year so I should yeah I should finish this before I start the other one but I'm not going to do all the stitches you do all the beat the back stitching and then you do the beading and then you're done and you're they're really small projects like this measures I think like what is it this, this measures five inches by five inches 70 stitches wide 70 stitches high it's a really quick project I think this took me like a week to do um, I have no life as well, so I probably have more time than the average person, but uh, I'm really happy with this. This is so fun to work on. So if you are looking for an alternative to diamond painting, I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out these button and bead kits. I'll put links down below to where you can buy them. And if you have more questions or you want to see more in-depth instructions, let me know in the comments down below. Have Also, let me know are you a cross stitch fan? I know like the majority of my viewers are diamond painters, but I want to know like, do you cross stitch? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.